morning. Welcome to Calvary Christian Fellowship's Palm Sunday service. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Andrew Pano, and we're so grateful to see all of you who have reached out to us with your prayer requests and praise reports. Please know that we are praying daily for each of you and for the requests that have come in, as well as rejoicing in the good things our great God is still doing in our midst. As you're watching this video today on Facebook or YouTube, we want to encourage you to like, love, comment, and share it to your friends and loved ones on social media. During this season, it has been so good to hear from you of how you are blessed by these services, and we hope you will be blessed by today. As this is the start of Holy Week, Calvary Christian Fellowship will be having a special Good Friday service at 6 p.m. During this service, we will be taking the elements of communion. We hope that you too will join us in taking the elements at your home. We do not believe that this is the literal body of Christ. So if you have bread or grape juice or something which will suffice, we hope you will take part in this symbolic time of communion. Then, next Sunday, we plan to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our Easter service at 10 a.m. We hope that you will join us. We do thank you for all of you who have sent in your tithes and offerings of support during this season. And if you'd like to make a donation or mail in your tithes and offerings to our ministry, you may do so by mailing them to Calvary Christian Fellowship, P.O. Box 25544, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46825. Calvary Christian Fellowship looks forward to the day where we will fellowship together again. And until that day, thank you for your prayers, love, and support. May God continue to bless and protect you and your loved ones. You know, Honey Tree, I've, I've interrupted our normal progression on the service or what we do. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I know that you and Andrew usually transition during that announcement time so discreetly, but I've just got something on my heart that I have to unload. Is that all right? Sure. This is, this is the month of April, the first Sunday of April, Palm Sunday. But um, did I get some things clear that I didn't understand? Because I'm not on Facebook, but I had a lot of friends contact me about you from the Internet that your spiritual birthday was Friday, April yes, the 3rd? April 3rd. I was That's... 50 years old in the Lord. Not when you got saved. You, yeah. you, you are 50 years old in the Lord. Yes. You were how old when you got saved? Seven, uh, no, I wasn't 50. <laughs> 17. 17. Mm -hmm. So that means you've 67. served the Lord a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but in knowing that it's April, and I, we can't invite Andrew to come join us because that would mess up our being the proper distance apart if he came and stood in between us. Mm -hmm. But he's in the background. And the two of you share something in common, and that is not only your spiritual birthday, but on April 11th... I will be 68 years old. You'll be 68 <laughs> years old. And, and Andrew's birthday is in April as well? Yes, April 20th. We tease the same day that Adolf Hitler was born. So we... <laughs> We don't know if that was a prophetic expression when that happened. No, we we got to quit picking on him. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to say is usually at Calvary Christian Fellowship, Andrew will, on this Sunday, the first Sunday of every month, have all the special days, the anniversaries and birthdays, and we celebrate them. And then he sings a song. Mm -hmm. He's been doing it for 14 years. And really it's a this is not teasing him it's a it's a horrible song and I, we're not we're not going to do it right now but we okay. want you to know first of all we wish you happy spiritual birthday thank you and we wish you happy birthday birthday may all my and dreams I, come true may all your dreams come <laughs> true but i think it'd be really really nice maybe ben can put it back up on the screen I'm sure that your Facebook and people can contact you, but maybe some are watching that wouldn't know any other way to contact you. I think it would be wonderful where Honey Tree celebrating 50 years 
of knowing and serving the Lord and the blessing she's been around the world. If you just took time and maybe wrote her a letter or just a simple little note, and my dad used to always say he wants you to write a, a letter because you can say in a letter what you can't send in a postcard. <laughs> and I think if you want to bless Honey Tree's ministry, we're, go we're going to have one of the services during these days that we just want to dedicate to Honey Tree as she's our, our first and only missionary out of our fellowship. And I know that she's got some things on her heart at the Lord Terry's in 2020 that she wants to do in obedience to the Lord's call on her life. But I also want to just share, uh, before we go much further about Honey Tree, J.R., your husband, uh, we've had a little subliminal message mm -hmm. ever since we started because J.R. gave me something years ago. It's a little Peanuts character. Yeah. We won't go through it right now. But I brought it out of the bedroom and, and placed it here. It would be over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we're mentioning J.R., is because we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now if it really wasn't for his vision and yeah. what he carried for our fellowship and this ministry to put us, I think it's been a few years now that we've been, five years we've been on wow. uh, YouTube and on the internet because of all of the equipment and things that JR paid for and gave to our fellowship. Yeah, he was really prophetic about that, wasn't he? He just... Well, he sure helped us get prepared. Yeah. And I just wanted to say in front of well, whoever's watching, and hopefully our people especially, that will bless you and thank you and JR oh. for the continued blessing. Praise the Lord. Because of what you provided. Amen. Well, with all of that said, happy birthday to you and to my, my son, Andrew. And will you take us to the Lord in praise and worship, please? Amen. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill betide, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land. A weary land, oh Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears, alarm, no foes of fright, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land. A weary land, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a weary land. A weary land, Jesus is the rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is the rock in the weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Jesus is the rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time. Jesus is the rock. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. 
tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of what my Father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, yield sunshine on the way. tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below oh how i love jesus oh how i love jesus One more time. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Let's sing that chorus again, maybe you're just learning this one with me, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Sing that again. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. We 
return to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. it again. Hosanna. 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 You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you going to sing this part because when we see you a couple of times I think it's so good for what we're going through right now because when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away sing that because when we see you because when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears let's do that again because when we see you because when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away one more time because when we see you we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna, the presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can sense His Holy Spirit. I can feel His grace. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Lord, I worship you now with all of my heart. Lord, I worship and bow my knees to your throne. Lord, I worship you now you and you alone. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. The presence of the Lord is in this place. 
presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can sense your Holy Spirit and I can feel your grace. The presence of the Lord is in this
out tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine or its sky may turn to gray. And I don't worry or the future as I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead. <laughs> and many, many things about tomorrow I don't see to understand. Oh, but, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow, <laughs> he's the one who stands by me. Praise the Lord. And the path. That is my portion. Maybe through the flame or flood, but his presence yes. goes before me, and I'm covered Hallelujah. with his blood and many things about tomorrow. I don't see to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Oh, many things, many things about tomorrow, I don't Because he lives. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will we'll never more wander, but walk on streets that are pure as gold. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. When we all 
get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Long time ago, we'd sing this one with that. I heard a thousand trumpets sounding out in glory, telling the story how he came to earth to die. I heard a million voices praise the name of Jesus. Singing in God's choir in the sky. I heard a thousand trumpets sounding out in glory, telling the story how he came to earth to die. I heard a million voices praise the name of Jesus, singing in God's choir in the sky. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, that was unrehearsed. Well, it's good. Amen. You know, people used to tell me that I ought to take my ministry of song on the road. Uh -huh. Just get out of town. <laughs> That's all they wanted me to do. So thank you oh. again, Honey Tree. And I hope, Ben, will you put it on the screen just one more time? Maybe I didn't make it real clear. We want to make sure that people will bless you on your birthday. Thank you. For both your birthdays, your born-again birthday. birthday and your natural birthday. Yeah. And uh, they can do that by sending however they want to bless you. And we'll make sure everything that comes that we give you 50-50. No, no, we'll make sure that every bit of it will go to you and be Praise a blessing. So if you want to write a letter of encouragement or what a blessing, I've talked on the telephone to so many of you that have said to me, oh, we can... Just feel the presence of the Lord when Honey Tree's singing and ministering in song. And uh, I think it'd be great if they bless you for the blessing you, you're being to us. Praise God. Amen. And, you know, on Facebook, what brought all this up was I wrote yesterday, I wrote my story of how I got saved That's in what great I heard. detail. So if people want to read that. Your testimony. Yes. Uh, they can go to my Nancy Huntertree Miller Facebook page and find it. Wonderful. That'll be a blessing. Just shortly after the earth began to cool, <laughs> Huntertree got saved, and she'll be sharing that with us. You know, we're talking about Palm Sunday, and Andrew said a little bit ago that this is the beginning of Holy Week. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of people that, in their relationship with the Lord, they say they want to go back to the early church. And I was I was thinking about that just this past week. You know, we are going back to the early church. Whether we intended to or not. Because, you know, the very first resurrection service that was celebrated was in an upper room where they had all the doors closed mm -hmm. and all the windows closed shut because they were afraid of what was on the outside and they were filled with terror on the inside yeah. so you know what in a lot of places they're having the early church whether they wanted to or not mm. because we're living in in closed in environments before we began the the, the videoing tonight we were kind of getting just a little silly yeah and you've made a confession that you're starting to get a little uh, Shacky, wacky. Well, just kind of like in a zone of of surrealness. Like it's nice to be actually in a room with, <laughs> with human another being. human being. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Isn't it a comfort to know, just like in that very first resurrection service where they were full of fear and concern that Jesus the resurrected Savior, manifested himself in that room. Hallelujah. And that the first words that he spoke to them were peace. Wow. Amen. And we're just believing 
that in whatever circle of ref uh, of influence that we're able to have now on the internet since we can't be together you know what jesus said he said we're two or three are gathered together in my name i'm in the midst there, there are just four of us here tonight uh jennifer is not joining us because she and champ have gone on a mission to be out of the house so they didn't disturb what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So there's just the four of us. But didn't we feel the presence of Jesus Absolutely. here? And we want you to have that experience. And one of the ways that we believe that peace can be manifested to us is through the Word of God. So we're, we're going to go to the Word of God, and I'm, I'm going to share a message that uh, I've never shared before. In all the Easter's, and I've, I've been privileged to be called and serving, not 50, but for 46 years uh -huh. of, of listening and sharing and trying to find Easter messages. I've never ever spoken about a little unknown hero of the whole Easter message that, that begins on Palm Sunday. He really is the, she is really the first hero that is given to us. And you know what? She is so important. She's found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, let, let me give them to you. I, I didn't get these scriptures to, to, to Ben, so we're going to kind of be flying by the seat of our pants a little bit here. But if you have your Bibles, I hope you'll open to Matthew 21, verses 1 through 9, and then I'll just give you the other references, because this same story is found in Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 10, and then it's found over in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 29 to 38. And then even John, he gives the account in John chapter 12, verses 12 to 14. And that's the story of what we call the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And in that triumphal entry that we call Palm Sunday, when we were able to, to meet together, Pastor Andrew would always purchase a bunch of palm su uh, branches mm -hmm. and we'd, we'd wave them as they did on that Sunday. And what a blessing that you sang on Palm Sunday, a new chorus to me of lifting up the name Hosanna because Hosanna, that's, that's what they declared yeah, on that day while they were praising him and worshiping him. But in that story, actually, it's a prophecy that was being fulfilled. Before we turn to Matthew 21, Ben, would you go to Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9? And, and there's a prophecy given because we give a lot of emphasis and there's some people that get confused about the story because what we're going to look at is a donkey's point of view okay. of Palm Sunday. Is that all right? Yeah. And uh, in Zechariah 9.9, 9, that donkey was included in the prophecy. It's on the screen right now. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. And that's on Palm Sunday. That was prophesied by Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, that he was going to be hailed as the king, and then he would be cut off shortly thereafter. We know what's coming up next week. We'll be celebrating, the Lord willing, that he was crucified, cut off. But aren't we grateful he rose again? But now we're getting the proclamation of his being declared the king on Palm Sunday. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the, the foul of a donkey. The foal. I the foal it's... of a donkey, not foul. <laughs> well, I've been around them. They are a little foul. <laughs> but thank you. The foal of a donkey. Now, both of them are listed there. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay. But I'd like for us to put on the screen, I don't know, Ben, if you can type my outline as I give it to you, that may help the people. But as I read this story again in all four Gospels just this past week, there were some things that came alive to me like never have before. And I'd like to share them. First of all, which always needs to be the most important thing of any story that we share whenever we get together as Christians, because it's the, the theme of our lives, and that is the Savior that's in the story. Amen. That's where it begins. Because 
just as this first entry of Jesus declares some things to us, it foreshadows the re-entry of Jesus uh -huh. to planet Earth. And I wrote some of these things down, and uh, I'll be going too quickly for, for Ben to keep up with me, but we're talking about the Savior in this story that we're going to look at from a donkey's point of view. Okay. He came the first time riding on a colt. Mm -hmm. That was his first entry into Jerusalem. But his re-entry, he's going to come on a great white horse. Praise God. When he rode in, he rode alone when he came in that first entry. But the book of Jude says he's the Lord who comes with 10,000s of his saints. Hallelujah. See, we, we believe the next thing on the agenda, everybody's going, oh, is there going to be doom and gloom ahead? Well, not for the believer, because we believe the next thing that's on the chart, for those of us that know Jesus as our personal Savior, it says that the Lord's going to come in the clouds, and the dead in Christ, they're going to rise first. Yes. And if we're alive and remain, we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. And then we're going to return when Jesus comes back visibly to planet Earth. Praise the Lord. Now, and when he comes that way, he'll come with the saints and his angels. Now, we, we didn't rehearse a lot of things we did tonight. And I'm sorry for interrupting your, your praise and worship. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you would tonight for some reason. That was good. Well, it was unplanned, and this is really unplanned. I don't know if you'll remember this or not, but my grandpa used to sing a song. He's coming. He said he would. He's coming back again. Oh, glory to his name. He's every day the same. He's coming. He said he would. He's coming back again. My Lord is coming back to earth again. Think of this, when he does, we'll be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and be caught up to meet him in the sky. With the fathers and his own, and all the saints in glory, the Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming back with the fathers and his own, and all the saints of glory. My Lord is coming back to earth again. He rode in that first time on, all alone on that donkey, but when he returns, he's coming with the fathers and his own, and all the saints in glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When he came the first time, we crowned him with a crown of thorns. Mm. You know, I look back when I think was thinking about it this week. Isn't that something that they humiliated him, they thought, by putting that crown of thorns. We'll talk about it in the Good Friday service. Yeah. On his head. But you know, that... That was a fulfillment for us of something important. Because when Jesus had those thorns, you see, when God originally created planet Earth, it was a perfect place. Mm -hmm. And that Garden of Eden must have been something to behold. Oh, my, yeah. And there were no thorns. There were no thistles. Not until sin entered the earth. That's right. And then the Lord cursed and said, now there's going to be thorns. Mm -hmm. And there'll be thistles. And that will be a plague that will be on planet earth now jesus took that crown of thorns because how many of us have maybe not a literal thorn but have you ever known what it is to have your mind be pricked with all kinds of thorns of doubt and fear mm -hmm. you, you you sang that beautiful old chorus about our not understanding things yeah. but we know many who holds about tomorrow. Tomorrow. many things they can torment us in our minds. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, you know what he'll do? He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. But it says before that, he was a man of sorrows. He became acquainted with grief. And he wanted us to know all of those thorns of the curse he took upon himself. Amen. That he could say to us, I'm a faithful high priest. He came the first time and he entered and there was a crown of thorns. But when he comes back, he'll have the crown of crowns as the king of kings. Yes. When he came the first time, we put nails in his hands. 
when he comes the second time and he re-enters, he's going to come with a rod of iron in his hand, which means he's going to come to judge the quick and the dead, the, the forces of darkness that have come against us, the evil forces that want to bring coronaviruses and all the things that are going on and torment us with fear. Jesus is going to come with a rod of iron in his hand and say, now I'm going to take care of business. When he came the first time, he didn't have enough money to pay his taxes. And when he comes the second time, it says over in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, in verse 15, that the kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ yes. forever. Amen. When he came the first time, they mocked him. And they all of a sudden jeered at him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. But when he returns the second time, it says over in Revelation 1 and verse 7, I love this. It says that those who pierced him, every eye is going to behold him, and the whole earth is going to mourn over him. Yes. So be it. Amen. That's what's going to happen when he returns. There'll be fear and trembling with every knee bowing Absolutely. and every tongue confessing. When he came the first time, we hung him on a cross. But when he re-enters, he's going to be coming back sitting on the throne. When he came the first time, he was judged in Pilate's hall. When he comes the second time and re-enters, he's going to be sitting on the throne, judging from the throne of God in heaven. And the last one I wrote down, when he came the first time, he was the lamb. But he's coming back as the lion. Yes. The lion of, of Judah, Judah shall break every chain and, and give, give to us the victory again and again. The lion of Judah shall break every chain and give to us the victory again and again. That's the Savior of the story we're getting ready to read. Now, I ask us to get our Bibles ready. And in Matthew 21, I'm going to read Matthew's account very quickly and give you three more of what came out to me as I was reading the story from the donkey's point of view. Okay. All right. And that's not too hard for me because I've had people call me a jackass most of my life, so I shouldn't have too hard of a time having this point of view. It says, <laughs> When they approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied there and a colt with her, or a fowl, or a foal. <laughs> Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken of through the prophet. Now we've already read that, verse 5. Verse 6 says, The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their coats on them, and he sat on the colts. Now, we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But a lot of people get confused. Well, one version is going to say he sat on the donkey. And then one is going to say he sat on the coat, colt. And now it says he sat on the coats. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, what took place? Well, you know, at the time of Christ and when they were writing, when, when there would come like a camel train that would be bearing the goods, that they would say whoever was in charge of that camel train was was sitting on that cattle train. Okay? okay. So apparently this colt wasn't going to be too willing to come without its mother. <coughs> and so they brought both of them and put their coats on them for the processional, and Jesus sat on the colts. So the declaration that he was sitting on them is fulfilled. That was his train coming into Jerusalem, all right? Now, let's go a little <laughs> further. Verse 8 says, Most of the crowd <coughs> spread their coats in the road. Boy, you hate to hear a cough going on right now. During this <laughs> That's time. terrible. 
<laughs> Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading, spreading them in the road. And the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, highest in the heavens. Now, let's take a look at three more things real quickly. We've seen the Savior that's in this story making his triumphal entry the first time. And hallelujah, he's coming back with a re-entry. But in this story that we just read, I also want us to take a look at the servants in the story. There, there were two groups that stood out to me. There were, first of all, the disciples that were there. And then it says, along with these disciples that were there, there was also the crowd that was there. Now, these disciples that are along, they're, they're praising him. You know, they're, they're the inside crowd. So they probably got a little closer to the donkey than other people that they could ride along there, walk along rather with Jesus in this. But you know what it says about these disciples another week? In another week, they're all going to be gone. They're not going to be crying out, Hosanna. Matter of fact, if Ben, we'll, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen. One of those disciples, Peter, that says, oh, I'll never deny you. I'll, I'll go with you wherever you're going to go. In Matthew 26, in verse 58, this disciple that's right there, a part of the Hosanna and glory going on, wow. It says in Matthew 26, 58, that he was following Jesus from a distance. <laughs> wow. The one that walked side by side with him through Galilee is now following him from a distance. Doesn't that give you a little bit of comfort to know sometimes when there's things going on that we don't understand and maybe we just kind of drift off from following the Lord. Maybe there's even some that are watching now that over the years Maybe they once were a disciple, mm -hmm. following close with the Lord, but tonight they're, they're following at a distance. There's an opportunity right now that they can draw near to the Lord. Yes. Ben, would you put up John chapter 19 and verse 38? Because there was a, another one in this crowd that was coming along, following. And, and before I tell it, I love the little story. You know, I mentioned Champ, our dog. Yeah. I heard the story about a, a, a little boy that had his dog, just a mangy old mutt, okay? And this businessman walked up and saw the little boy with his dog, and, and he looked at the old dog, and he said to that man, the little boy with the dog, dog, well, what kind of dog is that? And he, he looked back and he said, this is a police dog. And the guy said, son, that sure doesn't look like a police dog. And the little boy looked back and said, He's in the secret service. <laughs> you know, there are, a lot, there are a lot of us in the crowd that follow Jesus, like Joseph of Arimathea. Look what it says about him. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one. Wow. You know what I'm, I'm hoping will happen in homes all over the place, particularly the homes where we're trying to minister right mm -hmm. now. And that is that, that people that maybe have not really stood up boldly for the Lord, that they're really realizing these are some troublesome times like we've never, ever known before right. in the world, in our country. We're trying to solve things we've never, ever been faced with before. And in the middle of doing that, maybe like Jesus in that upper room that we talked about after the resurrection, when he said, peace be unto you, you know what he put at the end of that conversation? He said one more time, Now my peace I leave with you, and as the Father hath sent me, so send I you. When they were to leave that room, when they could finally open the doors and get out, yeah. they were to leave there as witnesses. Because Jesus said, you'll receive power. He didn't want us to be secret disciples mm -hmm. following at a distance. Those were the servants that were in this story. Number three, there were sinners in the story. Not only a Savior and servants that were there, but there were sinners in the story. 
And the way we really come to understand the picture of sinners now gets in the focus of the story from the donkey's point of view. Because he becomes a, a representation. He's just a type of all sinners, all humans. And I always get a little sensitive about talking about the donkey being like us. Can I, can I tell you a very unspiritual story real quick? Well. Do you trust me? Yes. That took a long time. Yeah. When I had the car accident, uh, my secretary and I were riding up to Angola where our, our campgrounds was at that time. Mm -hmm. And without going through all the details, there was a horrible series of accidents that were all there at that time. And all the hospitals in this tri-state area were filled up. I was initially taken to the Cameron Hospital, and then they transported me to the St. Joe Hospital here in Fort Wayne. Well, my mother was at the campgrounds waiting for me. And when I didn't arrive for the big women's retreat that was going on there, she became worried. And finally, word came, and they said, uh, you need to go to the Cameron Hospital. Phillips been involved with Cami in a terrible car accident. And so a young man, Steve Weaver, remember Steve, yeah. that worked on the staff, and he was there at the camp. He drove my mother to Cameron Hospital where she received word that they had taken me to Fort Wayne. And in transporting me to Fort Wayne, um, they had to come down the back roads because yeah. I-69 was all like, shut off. Yeah. Well, Steve was nervous driving my mother, you can imagine, mm -hmm. not knowing what's going on. And in tr the transit, they got lost in the back roads between Angola and oh, Fort dear. Wayne. And he wanted to comfort my mother, and he ministered at the camp with me, and he knew my favorite verse. My favorite verse, we'll talk about it more in just a minute, but in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God says, I know the thoughts I have for you, and they're good, not for calamity. I'll give you a future and a hope. Yeah. That's a great verse, that's right? Wonderful. That's wonderful. That's my favorite portion of Scripture. Mm -hmm. But Steve, in the pressure of the moment, clutched. Okay. And instead of saying, Mrs. Paino, look up Jeremiah 29, 11, Philip's favorite verse, he said, look up Jeremiah 22, 19. That's Pastor Phil's favorite verse. 22, 19. And my mother had her Bible. And this is the verse that my mother had to read out loud. Oh, dear. He will be buried with a donkey's burial, dragged off beyond the gates of Jerusalem. And that brought great comfort to my mother yeah. that they're riding in the car. So in telling this story about... Was she ever able to laugh about that later on? Much later. Uh. Much, much later. And, you know, Steve went on to another job. Uh. No, that's not true. The sinners in the story are, are, are displayed now through the story of the donkey that's there. I love that it says, this donkey brought her colt, and the two of them came together. When, when I read that this week, I thought back, you know, Andrew's here, and Andrew, he loves to listen to all the Billy Graham sermons. Mm -hmm. I, I think outside of my father, most probably Billy Graham may be one of Andrew's top spiritual heroes. What a great man of God. Amen. And, you know, a lot of people are unaware, but he trained so many people before the Crusades would take place. And what they did was, when the altar call was given, and people were asked to come to the altar, they, they always would have the crowd of people come along so that the sinner would never feel mm. they had to go all by themselves. They'd see other people going. And then when they would arrive, there'd always be someone there that could minister unto them yeah. the plan of salvation and pray privately with them. Isn't it a wonderful thing that the Lord wanted this donkey that's going to be a part of the story to come along with the colt? That colt wouldn't come without that mother, mm -hmm. but it was willing to come if another was there. Yes. Now, the lessons that I, I got from the donkeys, first of all, if Ben's doing the outline for us, is you see, Jesus had a plan 
for that donkey. Jesus has a plan for every one of our lives. If Ben will put now, not the verse that Steve Weaver confused my mother with, <laughs> but let's look closely at Jeremiah 29, 11, and look at what it says. It says that the Lord not only knows the thoughts that he has for us, but he has plans for us, plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give us a future and a hope. Just like that donkey, God wants us to know that Jesus has a plan for every one of our lives. Not only that, but this donkey was chosen. Think of it. I love the words that we read in Matthew 21 where it says that the Lord said, I have a plan and I choose that donkey. If anyone asks why you're coming to get that donkey and colt, you tell them the Lord needs them. Praise God. Wow. That's incredible mm -hmm. that the Lord would take this donkey and say, Phil, I've got a plan and I want you, I've chosen you to be a part. Ben, would you put up where it says in John 15 and verse 16, for some that are saying, well, that might apply to other people, but not my life. Mm. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you'd go and bear fruit, that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. You know what we're able to do with the word of God? Any place that you find a you in there, you can just write down your name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, Phil Pano, didn't choose me. You, honey tree, I chose to be my instrument. Wow. wow. Thank you, Lord. He has a plan. He's chosen us. And then look, it says that they put their garments, they put their coats on top of that donkey and coal. Now, why is that important? Well, the, the, the Word of God says, and Ben, if you'll get ready, we, we won't turn right now, but it says in Ephesians 4, verses 22 to 24, what I want to look at, and then be ready for Galatians 3, 27, all right? And, and we'll go there in just a minute. But the, the, the Word of God says that before we know Jesus, accept Him as our Savior, that we um, have our righteousness, uh, our what makes us right before God. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Lord says it is? It's like filthy rags. Yeah. Wow. Because we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. And those sins, and maybe people that are watching right now, I, I certainly know what it is to just feel like I'm so unclean before the Lord. That's why my favorite song that you sang mm. when we first began doing these. I, I love it, honey tree. Clean before my Lord. Amen. See, Ephesians 4, verses 22 to 24, says that in reference to your former manner of life, that we can lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you can be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God that's been created in righteousness and the holiness of the truth. Wow. Praise God. We can take off those filthy rags and the Lord now clothes us in His righteousness. Amen. He, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Wow. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't know where these are all coming from, but we used to sing a song down around the altar where people would come to get saved. Uh-huh. And it'd be, a lot of times we had a service called the Evangelistic Service, and that was on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people would come in from the outside, and they'd hear the word that Dad was preaching, and when the altar call was given, they'd come down to the altar. Yeah. And then we'd have a, a tarrying service. Mm -hmm. after, after church was done, we'd have an afterglow service. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my dad would burst into a song that would say this, The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart, for Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. 
I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. I finally found where you are. You want to do it again? <laughs> sure. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart, for Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. I love that one, yeah. Wow. He had coats put on him that he'd never had before. He represents us as sinners that we can come to Jesus and have that experience. But not only that, but you know what? The donkey went wherever the Lord led him. Doesn't tell us that there was somebody out in front pulling that donkey that can be stubborn. Somehow that donkey just knew with Jesus on him he could be led where he needed to go. Isn't it a comfort to know that all of a sudden... Are you ready for this one? Okay. <laughs> These are just coming. I love it. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. And all we have to do is follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. And all we have to do is follow. Because there's strength for today. And it's mine all the way. And all that I need for tomorrow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. That old donkey, <laughs> the Lord led him. Amen. And he went wherever he would go. Wow. But the most important thing that came alive to me is you see, we've talked about uh, the Savior in the story. And we talked about the servants in the story. And this sinner in the story. But there's salvation in the story. Because that's the most important part of everything we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Is that people not only just hear this story, but they realize there's salvation. You see how we know that? Is because that donkey made Jesus visible. When those coats were put over him, mm -hmm. all of a sudden... He went in to obscurity. Yeah. He was lifting Jesus up. Mm -hmm. He didn't hear people going, Hail Jesus, and by the way, ain't that a great looking donkey that's mm -hmm. coming on there? You don't hear the donkey being referred to at all. You know, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, he must increase, but I must decrease. There's something about us when we meet Jesus when we're saved. You know, Nancy, I've been listening to your story for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I never, ever get weary of listening to you share because I, I watch you and I listen to you and I've gotten to know you, I think, a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're just as excited today. <laughs> I'm still a Jesus freak. You're all. still a, a Jesus freak. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I, not everybody knows what that meant from 50 years ago. Uh -huh. But you're still in love with him. Amen. I'm loving him more every day. Loving him more every day. The more that I know you, I want to show you, I'm loving you more every day. I'm loving you more every day. I'm loving you more every day. The more that I know you, 
I want to show you I'm loving you more every day. This donkey was once tied up, but when Jesus came, that's what salvation does. Jesus said, when you find that donkey tied up, untie him. Mm -hmm. You know, you knew what it was to be tied up in a lot of things mm -hmm. 50 years ago. Yeah. And a lot of people out there today, they may be tied up with fear and doubt and confusion. Mm -hmm. We kind of laughed about getting stir crazy, but you know, a lot of people can find it's starting to play tricks on their minds. And we've got another month to go if the Lord tarries yeah. of facing them. The Lord, when He comes and brings salvation, He unties us. And sets us free. That's why it says in John chapter 8, whom the Son sets free, he's free indeed. Yeah. Not only that, but it says, you know what, in Mark chapter 11, chapter verse 2, that this donkey and, and colt, they, they were untamed. That colt was untamed. No one ever sat on him before. That's right, yeah. Wow. You know what? Weren't we all just rebels? Mm -hmm. The Lord... And his word says, all we like sheep have gone astray. I've even known what it is since I've been a believer to, to go astray. That's why it says that our Lord's the good shepherd. He's got a rod and he has a staff yeah. and they comfort us. You know what that, that rod's for? Well, it goes along with the staff because when the sheep maybe drifts off where it shouldn't be, he can take that staff and pull him out from where he wasn't supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But then the Lord's got a rod and bangs it and says, no, no, don't do that anymore. Uh -huh. Now, whom he loves, he chastens. Because yes. he, he wants to make sure that we not only know him as our Savior, but we make him Lord in our lives. Mm -hmm. He wants to be Lord over those things where there were other areas that were untamed. Ben, ben would you put up? I love Mark's account of this story because it says that the donkey in Mark 11, verse 4, not only that, but he was out. Look at this. They found the colt tied at the huh. door outside in the street. Uh -huh. You know, I know. I, I meet people all the time. They just feel like they're square pegs in round holes. They're just going through life feeling like they're on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were rejected with mom and dad. Maybe they not only were, 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 were rejected, but they, they grew up. And they had an inferiority complex, feeling like they, they never fit in anywhere. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful that we can, all of a sudden when we get saved, we become a part of a new family. Yes. And all of a sudden, instead of feeling like we're on the outside, that colt, he was brought on the inside. Mm -hmm. It says over in Ephesians chapter 1 that we're accepted in the Beloved. Wow. So beautiful. What a wonderful thing to know. I'm accepted. Yes. Not only that, but in Mark chapter 11 and verse 1, it says this donkey was found where they were approaching Jerusalem at, and look carefully, Bethphage and Bethany. You know what that means? Mm -mm. This donkey was found at the place of crossroads between Bethphage oh, okay. and Bethany. That's where they're going to find this donkey that's going to be there. And the colt. That's where people are right now. Maybe there are some that tuned in by accident and, and they just have stayed long enough to say, I want to see if that lady with that guitar can keep nailing every one of those keys <laughs> that that guy's singing in. And, 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 and in watching it, you know what? They become aware that they too are sinners. Mm -hmm. They need a Savior. And in need of a Savior, they're at the crossroads. Because now, once they've heard it, they'll never be at this place maybe again. Yeah. This may be the last opportunity where they're at the crossroads of going the way they've been going are changing the direction and saying, I'll accept Jesus. That's what repent, we say repentance 
Repentance yeah. isn't all about tears and having to go to an altar and have a bunch of emotional. Yeah. You know what? Repentance says, I was going this direction, but now I've had a change of heart. and I'm going to go this direction. Mm -hmm. The donkey was loosed, tamed on the inside because at the crossroads, he changed direction. And that's because last time we just leave Mark 11 and go to verse 4. Then this jumped off the page to me. They went away and they found a colt tied where, honey tree? At the door. Tied at the door. In John chapter 10, in verse 9, Jesus said, I'm the door. Wow, he's the door. That's why in the book of Revelation that we're studying on Wednesday nights, it says John looked up in heaven and he saw a door opened in heaven. Wow. Hallelujah. Jesus is where that donkey was right now. Think of it. We don't have to meet in a church. Oh, I know there's some all upset and all worried about. No, I, we need to get back to church because the Lord says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. Yeah. But we're not forsaking it right now. Just, just for a season, we're, as the church, I hope, but we're, we're being gracious and saying we, we don't want to be a part of the problem. We want to be a part of the solution. So we'll stay in our homes. And, and I believe that, that while we're here, there's an opportunity that's coming like never before because mm -hmm. people are tuning in. And you know what they're getting a chance to do? Just like that colt tied at the door right now. You're at the door. Jesus is there. Not only that, he's at the door of your heart. And he says he's knocking. And if anybody will open, he'll come in and he'll sup with you. Wow. Praise God. The view of Palm Sunday from the donkey's point of view. I hope everybody got them because there's a wonderful Savior in the story. And there are servants in the story that sinners were brought out through the story in the donkey that had salvation in this story. And that's what Jesus wants them for everybody. We hope that we've lifted Jesus up in this time with you. There's another chorus, if I could sing it. It just has come to my heart. <laughs> that I hope that we do every time we're together because he gives a promise that we're going to share just before we close. Can you help me do it, honey tree? Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. His name is Jesus, the name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, means God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If you've listened today and you've heard about a Jesus and you'd love for him to come into your life and you want to open the door of your heart, he'll set you free and untie you. And you know what? The restlessness in your heart, in your mind, He'll tame it for you. Give you a peace that passes understanding. Not only that, but instead of being an outsider, He'll put you on the inside of the family of God. And along with that, you can change direction. Old things passed away. All things become new. He said if He be lifted up, He'll draw all men unto Him. And that's what we've sought to do today. Father, I pray for whoever is watching right now. 
that wants to accept your son as their savior and be saved right now where they are. That Father, you'll let them know that if they'll believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus died for their sin, rose from the grave victorious to declare their salvation if they'll only believe in the name of Jesus. For there's salvation in no other name given under heaven among men other than Jesus, whereby we can be saved. Let them right now, Lord, make that confession and give them wherever they may be that blessed assurance that Jesus is theirs. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Calvary Christian Fellowship's Palm Sunday service. We hope that you will join us Wednesday night at 6.30 for our Bible study and be back also Good Friday at 6 p.m. and then next Sunday for our Easter service at 10 a.m. Also, if you want to be a blessing with your tithes and your offerings to this ministry, you may mail it to Calvary Christian Fellowship, P.O. Box 25544, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46825. Thank you. God bless and protect you. We'll see you soon.